of my interviewers was grilling me. He was grilling me. This is, this is a big moment. And to know that I was just a little project baby. You know what I mean? Before we get into the vlog, I did want to give a few brief disclaimers. First and foremost, I'm 25 years old. I'm grown. I curse. I bleeped out all of the curse words so you shouldn't hear it. But please keep in mind that I'm in the comfort of my own home 99% of the time in this vlog and I'm speaking like myself. Speaking of speaking like myself, I also was not in the best mental space because the waiting game, the constant highs and lows of you're not good enough or maybe you did your best, that whole debacle that you feel or the disorientation that you feel when you're applying to the med school cycle is very relatable and I'm not the only person that felt that way and I think it's pretty noticeable throughout the entire vlog. Sound horrible literally horrible i had to cut so much footage because of the sound when i was going through filming things i did not have the energy to check and i do apologize for that but i have also made up for it in the previous world well, upcoming vlogs that are also interview centered acceptance centered so yeah hopefully that will not be such an annoyance this is over a span of months from october until february so if you are seeing the same outfit a few times just know that this is over a span of months my nails look absolutely horrific again a very telltale sign that my mental health was not the best and i was just hanging on by a thread if that annoys you click off the video but do know that it improves over time <laughs> as i get better i bleeped out the school's name just because i didn't want to i didn't want to i don't know i bleeped out the school's name i'm pretty sure you could probably make out what I'm saying if you are familiar but I bleeped it out just in case I don't want them to think I'm trying to represent them or whatever I, I just feel like I'm gonna do that as a safety measure I don't know if it really makes much of a difference the interview outfit is absolutely atrocious please be kind to me this is my first med school interview is via zoom I want it to be a little bit more flexible on the bottom half so I bought a skirt that did not fit me the way I thought it would fit me because my it was off. My perception was a little bit off of what my body looked like and what a skirt like that would look like on me. So don't chop me off too much. I ended up taking it off. Also during this process, I was going through a research group change. I had floods in my apartment, plural, and you may sometimes hear the fans in the background. There's also context that is missing when I am speaking about this specific school in relation to another school so i ended up getting another med school interview and i have another one as well in the meantime so i do briefly discuss that one and if you're like why does it sound like she's talking about two med schools it's because i am but um hopefully this can be relatable useful motivational and um yeah i felt like this was a gap in the med school content on youtube and i just wanted to like fill it in and give people inspiration or motivation the best way, that, best way that I can, especially if you are like me from a low-income background, HBCU, um, doing your best. So, guys, guys, Ugh. okay. So, I have amazing news, right? I walk into my my work area, right? And I'm just like randomly checking my phone. And when I randomly check my phone, I see that I got an email from a specific medical school. I'm like, oh, it's gonna start happening. I'm gonna start receiving rejections. It was an interview invite. <laughs> it felt surreal. It felt surreal because I have been going through it this year. And obviously this is just like part two out of three. Like I, I have to, jump over the loop of like doing the interview doing a good job but i trust in my interpersonal skills i think i kind of got that in the bag a little bit i'm gonna practice and practice and practice and yeah it just feels surreal i had a good day today um not finna celebrate because i'm broke right now you know what i mean i had to buy all this for my room but i get paid next week i'm celebrating friday of next week I have a migraine and I've had a migraine all day and it's like isolated right here. So I need to stop.
talking. Guys, I completely and utterly was not like standing on business at all. Like, I tried to make myself feel better by going to like the Vietnamese spot that has the best pho. And honestly, it made me feel worse. I think I am sick, like physically sick. I don't know if this is like a manifestation of how I'm feeling because I don't have like. I don't have a clogged nose, and I know you don't have to have that, but every time I have, like, a viral infection, that legit happens. But I have so many body aches. Like, my entire body is fucking aching, and I'm freezing, like, and this is not like me. I am typically someone that is very warm. I get hot very fast, but, like, I'm using this heating pad on my entire body, and I'm just aching, and my throat is aching, like. I don't care to hold this camera right right now. You feel me? And I made plans with someone tomorrow, like Jade, but I might have to cancel because if I'm actually sick, then what the fuck am I doing going out? Like, I can't do that. Like, I'm in so much pain. And I took some of my ibuprofen because I'm like, this is a very specific thing. I actually have a temperature thing in the bathroom. Let me go see if I have a fever. I looked up the symptoms of fevers, and I don't have, like, any of those symptoms, but, you know, you never know. Okay, hold on. I'm going to use it. I have a fever. I'm fucking sick. Isn't this dangerous? Should I be like more concerned? I don't know. Let's do it again. Same thing. It's actually higher, but well, I am sick. <sighs> mm, and I just went out. I literally thought that was like in my head. I, I just don't know what it means. Let me Google what this means. Should I go to the fucking urgent? Should I go to the hospital? I mean, I feel horrible. My body is literally freezing, but like not freezing. And you know what? I should have known I was sick because after I left, I was so tired that I stopped in the parking lot and I fell asleep blasting my heater. I do not like heat. Like, I cannot explain that, but... um. So yeah, I need to cancel my plans and um, yeah. Hola, como estas? We are practicing for my interview. I have a mock interview set up tomorrow. And I just want to go through all of the questions at least once or twice because, you know, I'm just glad I'm feeling better at least a few days before my interview so I can actually practice. And I will be doing a mock interview and I know I won't be perfect so I can just figure out how to navigate that. And I did my questions in a Google Docs document. I just copied and pasted everything that I did initially on my words note to google docs because i'm just a docs as it's just so much easier and more convenient and i have down 15 questions that i presume are more high yield because when i went across websites i kept seeing very similar questions and i'm just going through them i did the first five which was tell me about yourself discuss your decision to pursue medicine why do you want to attend this school what is your understanding of rural medicine because the school that i got an interview at is more rural and underserved population focused, but more so rural. And why did you decide to choose medicine and not some other field? Those to me are very high yield. The next five is, what is your experience in rural medicine? How has your research experience, if any, better prepared you for a medical career? How have the jobs, volunteer opportunities, or extracurricular experiences that you have better prepared, that you have had better prepared you for the responsibilities of being a physicians oh my god i cannot read 
read what excites you about medicine oh my god and if you are economically disadvantaged or have limited financial means how has this adversity shaped you and the reason why i added a more diversity focused question is because i have a disadvantage statement if you read my application it's pretty clear that i make my reality present which is money is literally always an issue because i'm funding everything by myself and i don't have financial support and that obviously has a big deal with what i'm able to do and blah blah blah, blah. so that is the next five i think one two three four five yeah i have a timer of one minute and 30 seconds because they say something that they i've, I've seen where you should kind of limit your responses to around 22 minutes because after two minutes typically people zone out and i don't want nobody to zone out on me so first question is what is your experience of herbal medicine and i'm just practicing y'all it's my first time answering this question out loud my experience with herbal medicine is from a patient perspective when covid happened i did have to relocate to fort valley which is 35 minutes away from where i was born and raised in macon georgia and following my relocation to fort, um, to fort valley i started experiencing trouble breathing and being winded and it just made functioning a lot more difficult and when it got to that point i decided that i wanted to seek help and in my efforts to seek help i realized that on top of the COVID restraint that was placed on a lot of healthcare providers and facilities that the closest and most available primary care physicians would be two to three months out and i needed help in that moment or at least within the week or two and it just kind of discouraged me once i realized how far out that care would be and i would have to travel longer distance in order to get more convenient care and that lasted until i had to i had an emergency episode and that emergency episode caused for me to have to travel to Macon, Georgia to have emergency care and through the hospital, the Coliseum, I was later recommended or referred to a primary care physician who was readily available within the week. And there I was, a, I was, um, there I was diagnosed with adult onset asthma and the physician pretty much stressed the importance of me getting to them at the point, at that third moment, 30 more seconds, at the point that I did. And this overall experience just showed me from a patient's perspective, although not as severe as some people, because some people have chronic disorders, some people have immediately emergent, um, events that requires more quicker care but it just let me know that there are a lot of limitations that are placed on rural medicine healthcare providers and also a pandemic can further stress it out and make patients access a lot less convenient than it already is and that has been my experience primarily with rural medicine I, I, that's the truth you know what i mean i guess last five questions if you are economically disadvantaged or have limited financial means how has this adversity shaped you I'll say that limited financial abilities or means has made my journey towards medicine a lot more difficult in the sense where I'll have aspirations for certain things and having to factor in, okay, I have to fund this myself. So do I have the capacity to financially support myself while indulging in whatever endeavor I'm interested in that I think will help better prepare me as a physician? So for example, deciding to find a fellowship at the NIH fostered a lot of pros in the sense where I'll be in biomedical research, I'll be contributing overall, I'll get meaningful research, I'll improve my, my critical thinking, my presentation style, which are all very useful for medicine, but it'll also grant me the ability to have advisement academically as a non-traditional student now. Um, it'll provide me an environment where I'll have more access to shadowing or clinical volunteer opportunities. It just fostered more opportunities. But I lived in Macon, and I didn't have family to support me moving. So I had to figure out how I was going to do that. And honestly, once I got my acceptance and decided that I was going to take the job opportunity, the fellowship, I went with it. I just said, I'm going to figure it out somehow, some way, ran up some credit card debt. And now I'm at a point where I was able to get that shadowing. I was able to get the clinical volunteering. I was able to fund my application because I took the initial step to get a better position. And this is just representative of how every step has been. I need to go to school to be a doctor. So how will I get to undergrad? How will I fund it? Well, get there, figure it out. And I figured it out and I graduated first generation. So that's just how the adversity has affected me. It has allowed me to be a realist. It has allowed me to see what the situation is and that I can't be perfect. I can't magically create the funds from someone else. I have to figure out how I can balance funding something and also achieving what I want. And it has also allowed me to have a lot of grace, like to always be poor, to, oh, oh, damn, to, to always have finances being a barrier. You kind of have more, you have more appreciation for what you are able to achieve and maintain. And I think that has helped me significantly. So that's how those adversities have affected me. I'm just trying to get everything prepared tonight for my interview.
you and I'm giving myself breaks in between things because I've noticed this thing that I do is I rush. I rush and I do, I try to do everything all at one time and I get really tired and I don't need to rush. It's not the day of my interview. It's probably just seven o'clock. Yeah, it's just 7.39. What am I rushing for? I'm excited. I'm not as nervous as I thought I would be. And I think it's because I did a mock interview. So if you are watching this video and you have a lot of anxiety, I'm not saying you won't have anxiety. The day of your interview, I'm not even saying I won't have anxiety. But you know what I mean? I feel a lot better now. I feel a lot more confident. I'm not really finna go back through questions anymore because... I don't have a problem answering questions. I just need to not be in my head and that's not something I can manage to achieve overnight. I just have to be myself, like how I'm talking to my camera. I have to talk to these people through a Zoom call. I'm gonna just try to get my computer set up probably the morning of, have everything set aside. I have to figure out how I'm gonna separate Stormy, if I'm gonna be in my closet or if I'm gonna put her in my closet. And I know that sounds so harsh, but like, she will not leave me alone if I'm in an interview, so I have to figure out where I'm going to put her. But I might just put her in my room so she'll have more space. And then I'll be in my closet and then just blur out the background and have lights set up. So, whatever I decide to do. I have to treat this like this is my only interview because right now it is. It is. And I had to double check my calendar. If you are applying to med school next year, this video there are a lot of things that I did because I'm like a uh, anal person I guess or not even anal I just like to be organized and I put in my calendar the day I received a secondary the day I submitted my secondary so that I can track the time between me and also the day I received like um, confirmation and my application is completed because for certain schools when you submit your application I mean your secondary you don't automatically get like an email so I did that so I can keep in my mind like oh you're not hearing back from any of these schools and it's like okay it's only been two weeks it's only been three weeks and most schools have around the four to six week period so that has kind of helped me ease my anxiety a little bit but I'm at I am approaching like four weeks for a few schools um, so yeah just um let's just reconvene tomorrow Guys, I woke up this morning and I am annoyed because my cat, for some reason, it's just annoying me more than normal. And if I don't feel like I'm being left alone, I'm not happy. But right now, I need to be in a happy mood and a good mood because I need to, I'm, I need to interview. And I just set up my closet to be that space because I have to consider her and what she's going to need for like four hours and I don't want to have to think about that like I want to just be able to sit down and woosah my stress do my makeup but like no I have to see what can I put for entertainment for her now I have to start my shower <sighs> anyways we're gonna woosah I'm not gonna do any dramatic makeup that's why I'm not together i'm just gonna hit a shower put on some mascara put on some blush take my rods out and then we'll get started so yeah um and i'm also drinking tea my battery's gonna die i'm done venting good vibes from here on out i have my outfit laid out Ugh, just yeah mm. top uh skirt that was not supposed to be as many i was delusional about how it would fit me but they don't see that part they just see the top part so i'm not really worried about that i have to take the skirt off the aesthetic is dead i know who is interviewing me yeah guys um please be a little bit more organized than me i would say because i am kind of all over the place i know nerves i let nerves get to me so right now i got my 
interview people names and I looked it up briefly before I started getting ready which took a little bit of time I think I told y'all that and then I know what they both do one person is a committee person one person is not and the non-committee person is an endocrinologist interesting um I accept reality with a generous heart and open mind. I accept reality with a generous heart and open mind. I am harder than the challenges I face. I am harder than the challenges I face. I will never give up without giving 200%. Y'all. <laughs> okay, it wasn't a bad interview. Like, no one was mean or rude or whatever, but one of my interviewers was grilling me he was grilling me but not in like a why do you want to be a doctor but like he just was the only one asking questions back to back it didn't feel like no conversation you know people would be like it's just a conversation like a coffee coffee shop conversation it wasn't no coffee shop conversation it was question after question after question it was two people and i pray i did a good job i feel like I did a good job because I answered honestly. I allowed myself to take a moment if I needed to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get my nose done anymore. I have very low energy and I think it's just because I'm hungry. They were calling me Siobhan in my interview because I told them that I'm more commonly addressed by Siobhan. Because I am. I used to be so skinny. I never want to go back there. I'm sitting outside a mall parking lot. I need to do, I need to eat first, I need to do a thank you letter, and I need to do the survey, and I need to do all of that today. I decided to eat for the tacos. I have one of the first thing. I'll leave a spot in here. A lot of help. over obviously it's like five something and i just booked a brazilian brazilian wax appointment but not at my typical wax spot i usually go to i think you i think the name is akira um but i know i know that i know them like i know that if i show up like 30 minutes before they're closed they're probably already closed like i'm not wasting my my gas my time so I found another bikini spot, 17 minutes away. So it's like a four minute difference, but it's, it's, you know what I mean? They're open till eight and my appointment is at 6.45. So yeah, um, the food I had was great, but I didn't know what I wanted to eat. And it took me like an hour to figure out what I wanted to eat. And then I just decided on burrito tacos and I love burrito tacos. Did I have it? in my mind that I was going to eat it today but I did and I know that it was like probably 5,000 calories you know um I really hope my interview went well I feel like I did a good job but I'm not the one ranking me I'm not the one deciding if I am a good choice or option so I'm not really gonna hold my perception of my performance too high because it's not up to me. I hate my hairline so much. You have no idea. But there's no escaping it. Like, it's just, it's a low hairline. And it's ugly. That's all I got for today. That's all I got. Guys, my hair is done. My makeup is on. I'm not going nowhere. Anyways, um, that was a TikTok video, which I need to delete TikTok momentarily in undergrad i had a lot on my plate but i didn't have a breakdown and i realized i didn't have a breakdown because i had support i had my program i had the psychology department i had a few friends i had my friends back at home like i built a community of people and it was like granted a, a community of professors and mentors based off my program and my degree and it just made things a lot easier to keep pushing forward. But once I'm in a space where I don't feel like I have any of that and I'm just like pushing forward, it feels exhausting. 
And not only that, I've been on go since I was a child, y'all. Like, I've been on go. There has not been a period of time where I have not worked. And if there was a period of time that I did not work, I was at school and it was COVID. And even during COVID, I worked. I worked at Domino's. I worked at Hobby Lobby. I worked at Geico. I worked at the Carlisle Place. I was, girl, I've been working. And I've worked too much. And now I'm at a point where I'm in my life where I don't want to do that anymore. You know, I'm, I'm soft like I got to prioritize get into that next step without burning myself out because that'll do nothing but hinder myself. Now I'm at a point where I know life as it is and I know what's on paper matters and I know my narrative that I have to, to share for residency programs is important. And because those things are important, it's important for me to be on my game as best as possible the entire time. And if I keep functioning like I've been functioning, I'm going to burn out probably year one in med school. You know what I mean? Like spread out my things, my time, my energy, and not feel like I have to do so many things at one time. Watch my TV show, read my book, journal, have free days. That's what I need to do. And even in med school, I'm going to create an environment for myself that works for me and not what works for, for everybody else. When I was in my interview, I don't know if I said this, but they gave a lot of insightful advice. And one of them were like, loans, you're going to have them regardless. But if pulling out additional money will help you maintain your comfort and your mental health, you might as well do it. And I'm that kind of girl. You know what I mean? I'm going to have loans anyway. And I'm thankful that most of my undergrad loans are very minimal, like just first semester loans. So if I want to take out additional loans in medical school to support myself, to shape the comfort that I have now, plus the saving I'm doing, I'm going to do that. So, yeah, I'm just like just thinking and like figuring out ways to make my life a little bit easier and not be so hell bit on productivity because it's really not worth it even though i'm kind of engaging in it now what i'm doing now like doing my makeup doing my hair filming is exhausting but not exhausting to the point where i don't feel good afterwards like once i complete it i feel good be seated you like that i need my phone to charge oh my nephew is the cutest cute baby oh my grandmother wants me to print this out so she can put it on the Christmas tree. And she wants a picture of a stormy bass suit. Here for it. I will get in. So I'm not even going to stress myself out. I'm doing my due diligence. And I am kind of beating myself over the head about my previous interview at because I'm like, what if you weren't smiling enough? What if you weren't like like super extroverted and that rubbed them the wrong way mind you i had two different kind of people in my interview like one person was like kind of warm and welcoming and the other person was like drill sergeant vibes and i was doing my best to maintain my own personal cope like my own personal level of like responsiveness like how i would actually talk and i'm like what if i should have done more what if i should have been like yeah like uh, that's so amazing like I hate that I'm even like questioning whether or not I have to be this super bubbly person in an interview that's supposed to be getting to know me. I feel like people can be a little bit monotone, or I'm not even monotone for real, but people can be a little bit like not so giddy and be competent and easy to talk to and great physicians. I personally don't need my physician to be giddy. Just be nice and kind and normal for whatever that is for you and this is not to attack people that are naturally giddy i'm just saying like i smiled i made sure that i show interest when they asked me particular questions like i'm just beating myself over the head about that interview and i'm like i need to just let it go and focus on like hopefully i get both acceptances so i can actually weigh my options if i do want to talk about like in comparison to how my interview went, I, I still haven't like heard anything back, which is better than me being waitlisted or rejected. I'm just going to hope for the best and hope that the holidays is the reason why it has taken so much time. I also stalk the SDN website for 
order for this cycle to see if anybody from my um, interview date or timeline have received anything back. And so far, it has been anyone besides the people from October. So maybe they haven't gotten around, whatever. Um, I feel like my interview was more like question after question after question. And I want my interview for to be more conversational. I don't want it to feel like I'm constantly being bombarded with questions. So I'm going to try to see if I can like engage them a little bit more and maybe it'll be easier. Maybe they'll naturally try to make a conversation comparison to what I experienced at um, I was told prior to our interview, like some of these interviewers are like more conversationalists. Some of them are more like question after question. So depending on who you get is not directly a representation of who you are as an applicant. It's just who you have. So I'm trying to be more positive about that. Like I can't help that this military style person is literally asking me question after question. And then the other person who was a lot more personable, who I feel like I could have created a conversation with was not like pretty much the leader of that conversation. This is this is a big moment. <sighs> and I just washed my hair too, so I can't even, you know, I gotta do my hair before I do anything. No context, but um, I just got accepted into my first medical school. <laughs> I look crazy because I washed my hair and now my hair is like kind of partially drying because I put in a bun or what, whatever, that doesn't matter. Basically, I have a med school acceptance now. I will officially be in the med school. That's crazy to me. <sighs> I'm already feeling like myself a little bit more. But I want to go ahead and end this vlog right here, okay? And the only way that I can end this vlog is if I actually do myself a service. Or if I avoid doing myself a disservice by not speaking on my acceptance and like how grateful I am and just like the acceptance itself and how far I've come, yada, yada, yada. I was laying in my bed, just living my little life. Y'all saw like a brief clip of me on the phone with my mom until my battery died, but I was in my bed and prior to the acceptance, they only start fighting, I kid you not, when I start talking. I like It's like I give them energy by opening my mouth, I'm trying to figure out ways I can stop obsessing and constantly checking the student doctor network tab for mercer i do it for all of the schools i've applied to as it relates to morehouse howard and mercer because i've interviewed there and mercer was like the main fixation for i guess yesterday which is crazy because it was like the 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 thursday after the third wednesday in the month and if you are on that you know, if you're on that website and you are following Mercer's like tab or whatever, then you know exactly what I mean. Like that's when they are supposedly reviewing applications and when people usually hear back, hear back from them. And I'm trying to convince myself like, I don't give a damn. They don't see what I got to offer. Then, you know, I, I'm going to live my life. Life is what it is. I, like I was trying to convince myself that I didn't give a knowing that I keep checking it because I get <laughs> And I interviewed last year and I'm like, I still haven't heard anything back. So they don't like me. I don't like them. But it's like, it's not true because I applied to schools that I want to go to. Like I applied to schools I don't mind going to if only they accept me. So I'm sitting here like, I got to figure out a way to stop obsessing over this thread because I don't care. I kid you not. I stop. I forget about it for like a brief second. I see a, a email i felt excitement but I, I have this bad habit of like what else like i feel this emotion i'm not used to excitement as a feeling which i've learned so when i feel it i don't know what the feeling is but today i've identified that what i felt in that moment was excitement and joy that's what i felt and um did it feel good i, I feel neutral about it excitement feels very neutral for me but um Y'all was very excited and I'm in my mind thinking like, okay, so what are you going to do? Like, obviously you want to have options. So hopefully the other schools that I interview at will accept me and I can actually weigh my options and figure out, do I want to be in Atlanta? Do I want to be in DC? Do I want to be in making Columbus or Savannah? Like, where do I want to be? And I would only be able to have those outlooks or options if the schools give me the opportunity. 
right now, if I'm being like an adult and I'm factoring in cost of living, the life I want to live, like I want to have my own apartment, like I want to be, I want to create my own safe space in med school. Mercer seems like a better option financially for me to attend. I have familial support, even if it's not perfect, I have that there in DC, I will be starting all over for, from scratch all over again. If I move to Atlanta, I'll be starting from scratch all over again, even though I went to school there, but it's still a potential to relink to have a community there. So it's like, I have so many, I have, theoretically, I have options in my head because I did good in my interviews. Like I know I didn't do a bad job and I hate that I even questioned that during the process, knowing that I did my due diligence and that I've gotten critical free feedback from people, criticism, and took those, the criticism and changed those things. So yeah, that, that was crazy. And I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm like, I'm really content. I feel like a weight. I don't, you know, I don't want to lie. I don't feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulder. I feel happier that my my choice of medical school, my my decision to apply to medical school more specifically during this time period did not go did not go punished. I, I I benefited from that. I will I've solidified the fact that I don't have to apply again. I don't know if I, I listen. I don't know if it's in this vlog of how I edited it, but I definitely was like I don't have it in me to reapply. I don't have an Emmy and that probably was when I got my wait list from Howard that probably is more fitting for Howard because I hadn't heard anything from Mercer but like I was like damn what does they fuck me for like that's how I felt but now I'm here and now I know I'll be a doctor I'll be an MD I'll be a student again I'll be on my ground with a rhyme and a reason and a purpose and it'll be my purpose and not me being in research this goddamn much i love research i think research is important i will always do research as much as i can but i have to be honest research is not my love research is not my passion it's not and i know this because i've done research for i was a freshman at the time so i became a freshman in 2017 but i started research 2018 so i've been doing research since 2018 it's 2024 clock the timing you feel me? I know I don't want to do this full time. I know that there are other people who have more passion for it that are more fitting. I just like the clinical aspect and how using research can improve clinical settings. I want to be those that kind of physician. Nevertheless, um, I feel elated. And I was at a symposium today. I don't know if I, it's probably not in this vlog. It's in another vlog because that's like a monthly vlog unrelated to med school. But um, I if I seem very like hyper right now, I am, and I don't know why. So just roll with the punches. Just roll with it. This is just roll with the punches. So um, what was I about to say? What was I about to say? I've been eating Freddy's for three days straight. I haven't tried the shake yet, which I bought it yesterday from what I purchased. This is from today. And I got a Pepsi because I saw one of the people. Yeah, this is what I was going to talk about. I lost my train of thought and then I just remembered it by talking about that. So one of the people that are in my new research group, which I'm very appreciative of. I love these people already, you know. She was like telling me, they all were, but she was like, you need to celebrate. You need to live in the moment. You need to not allow the feeling of, okay, what's next? Or it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to compromise your actual celebration because after i did all that screaming i came back to my room and legitimately forgot about it like it's so it, it sounds so stupid because it's like you were just obsessing over this but once i got it i paid for my little deposit and then i forgot about it and then i, I would remember it and i'll be like you need to feel this way about it but you don't feel this way about it so like what is wrong so i put myself in this cycle of like i should be feeling a certain way but now I'm feeling like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's a good thing. But like, okay, what's next? And that has always been the way I think. Like I give myself a brief moment. And then after that brief moment, I have a very low low. Like I've said this in another vlog. And I've probably said it in this one. I have very low lows after a very big accomplishment. Y'all, I have come extremely 
far. And what I'm learning through therapy is that I tend to minimize things a lot and minimize my traumas until they come to a, a, a like until I explode because of that trauma and something that triggered it. I am minimizing it up until a certain point and then I'll re-minimize it in order to function. It's like a toxic cycle of like minimize something explodes minimize something explodes like putting it to the back but never fully addressing it and working past it and a part of my struggles as a person has been getting out of poverty and and making my own way and figuring out life without help and when i say help i mean like i know if my mom had it she would help me she would have helped me get to um undergrad she would have helped me financially like she can't do those things my family cannot do those things so I don't weigh that on them but that doesn't change the fact that I'm still doing this by myself I moved out here by my own rhyme by my own my own initiative I've always figured it out and and have come this far and to know that I was just a little project baby you know what I mean a project baby who had only maternal support most of my life besides my granddad um I've come a very long way. Like I said, I'm grateful that I trusted me and I allowed the little childhood me, the real optimistic and the, well, let me take the, she was optimistic career wise. Let me, yeah, she was very optimistic and like, I'm going to get what I want to get. And I don't care what you think, what you think. I'm going to do what I want to do because that's what I want to do. And I know I can do it. I love that about myself. Because had I listened to maybe some of the bad advice that I've got I've gotten from other people, it w I wouldn't have been here right now. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have applied one cycle and got accepted. So I'm grateful. I think Mercer is a great school, and I'm so grateful that they accepted me and was like, "Yeah, we want her." Through all that crap I went through to get to this point, is better than nothing. If you're watching this video right now and you've made it to this point, then Trust in you, specifically trust in you if you know that you've done the work to have a lot to offer. Go ahead and do it. You don't need a 528. You don't need a 4.0. You don't need a perfect secondary application. You don't need a perfect personal statement. You don't have to be perfect to get accepted into medical school because I am not perfect. I'm not a perfect applicant, okay? I'm not, I'm a good one but I'm not a perfect one. And don't feel like you have to be at that perfect point to get to that point. But if you feel like you need to have a certain criteria to go to the schools that you wanna to go to because you have different aspirations than me, then I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to people who are trying to reach this, this level of perfection in order to feel good enough to apply to med school. And it's like, you got the passion you got the ability to accept criticism because you need criticism throughout this entire pro process. If you are doing everything without somebody else looking over your, hearing you talk, you are doing yourself a disservice and you are not doing your due diligence. No matter how good of an interview person you are, no matter how good of a writer you are, because I'm a good writer. Listen to me. Don't let my dialect, my slang, my whatever confuse you. I write really good and I always have. That didn't stop the fact that I needed criticism on my personal statement. And then once you get past that personal statement crunch, you learn so much about how these medical schools want you to write in order to convey your story. That once you do like a few secondaries, you get a hang of it. But you got to go through the criticism part first. Anyways, my memories run it out. But I just want to say thank you for watching my video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. More videos like this will be on the way. Um, I'm a medical student. Well, future medical student. Yeah, I'll be a doctor. So, um, like, comment, and subscribe. I think I said that. I don't know. I don't remember.